Hey guys and welcome back to my channel for another midweek mystery video where today I'm going to be talking about the disappearance of Elena Carisi, a 23 year old Italian woman who disappeared under mysterious circumstances whilst visiting New Orleans in January 1994. Elena Marie Carisi was born on November 29th, 1970 in Rome. She didn't have a normal childhood by any means. She was the oldest daughter of Albano Carisi and Romina Power, who in turn was the daughter of famous 1940s actor Tyrone Power and Mexican actress Linda Christian. Albano, who went by the stage name Albano, and Romina were famous Italian singers. I saw them referred to often in sources as the Sunny and Cher of Italy. They were a duet and they were married from 1970 to 1999. Elena was essentially born into the public eye. Her family were all stars. When she was around 12 or 13 years old, she would go on to appear with her parents in the film Champagne in Paradiso and she would later become a letter turner in the Italian version of Wheel of Fortune as a teenager. But she soon decided that the public eye wasn't for her and she changed careers. She decided that she wanted to be a writer. She didn't share her family's love of being famous, of being known. And so she goes on to attend King's College London where she studied literature and received the highest grades in her year. This was a really smart girl. Elena was a white female. She was five foot seven and 120 pounds. So she was a fairly tall and slim girl. She had strawberry blonde hair and green eyes and she was of Italian, American and Mexican descent. She spoke fluent English and Italian, obviously. In the summer of 1993, Elena takes a trip to New Orleans with her parents and she becomes enchanted by the city. She finds herself inspired for her first ever novel, which she intended to be a gritty account of the life of down and out street musicians in New Orleans. And this is an idea that she spends the next few months just mulling over. Whilst in New Orleans, she meets a street musician, 54 year old cornet player, Alexander Masekela. And she sort of strikes up this friendship with him, I suppose. So whilst her parents decide to continue on with their trip around America, they move on to Florida, Elena makes the decision to stay in the city on her own for a little bit longer, saying she wanted to write and paint. So Albano and Romina head on to Florida without their daughter, only for Elena to follow them quickly just two days later. According to the Italian media, Elena told her parents that she was worried that two men had been trying to drug her and kill her in New Orleans. But I couldn't find too much follow up on this though and Lenya would later return to New Orleans. So she may not have been concerned about this as the Italian media made out. Whilst at university in London, Elena had been entertaining the idea of traveling solo, just her and her backpack. She hoped that it would inspire her to write some future novels. So she decided to take a break from her studies at King's College, just one year out, and follow her dreams of backpacking. So she returns to Italy, she sells all of her belongings to fund the trip, and she decides to begin in South America. She heads to Belize, where she spends many months just travelling around this one country, enjoying the towns and the beaches, and she spends a majority of her time in Belize in a place called Hopkins, a small village that she just fell in love with. Lenya had a brother called Yari, who was also a very experienced traveller. I'm sure her confidence in travelling alone was partially inspired by the fact that her brother had done it for years and really loved it. Just after Christmas in 1993, Yari decides to head to Belize to surprise his sister, arriving there on the 27th of December, but he can't find her anywhere. This is a time before the majority of people had mobile phones, so he has to go door to door searching for his sister, but he's eventually told by the locals in Hopkins that she boarded a bus to Mexico the day after Christmas. He'd missed her by just one day, and Elena was continuing on her travels. She was in pursuit of a new adventure. She decided to begin the long journey back to New Orleans to continue with the research for her novel. Her mum was quoted in the media as saying later that Elena wanted to find characters for the book she was writing. So on the 30th of December, Elena arrives back in New Orleans and she checks into the $23 a night hotel, Le Dale, which is a very popular hotel for travellers located about five blocks from the very popular French Quarter. Only Elena wasn't alone when she checked in. She actually checked in alongside Alexander Masekela, the 54 year old street musician that she'd met the previous summer. Now he is said to have gone by the nickname Pops and he's since been described as a yarn spinner with a penchant for charming young women, usually Taurus. This is something he did often. He made friends with younger women traveling around New Orleans. However, the hotel manager who checked them into the hotel that night said that whilst the pair seemed out of place together, she doesn't believe they were romantically involved. They just seemed to be helping each other out. Elena specifically asked for a room with two beds. 
Over the next few days, Elenia mingles with the street musicians and the homeless population, taking notes and getting inspiration for her book. No one really pays too much attention to her comings and goings from the hotel, but people that Elenia spoke to over this time period would go on to say that she was really trying to throw herself into this culture, learn as much as she possibly could about the people that she was writing about. On January 6th, 1994, Elenia leaves the hotel alone at about 11 a.m. She is wearing a long floral print dress and a waist length jacket and she heads to the French Quarter. And from there, she just vanishes. No one noticed her disappearance for about a week. Nobody raised any alarms. It was only when Alexander showed Elenia's passport to hotel staff and attempted to pay the hotel room bill with an unendorsed traveler's check and was consequently evicted, did anybody notice that anything was amiss. Alexander asked if they could keep some stuff behind the desk for a few hours and handed over a backpack, but he never returns to get it. This would later turn out to be Elenia's backpack, filled with all of her clothing and personal items, including her passport, camera and notebooks. It was, of course, never claimed again, and Elenia didn't really go anywhere without her camera and notebooks. That was the entire reason that she was in New Orleans. She was finally reported as missing by her parents on January 18th, who were really concerned as they hadn't heard anything from their daughter since New Year's Day. Of course, they were back in Italy at this point, so they contact a friend in America who in turn contacts the New Orleans police. An immediate search for Lenya yields no results, and honestly, I couldn't find much information about the police investigation for the first few days. In late January, the police do question Alexander, who of course denies knowing anything of Elenia's whereabouts, but he says that she was sure that she was safe, wherever she was. He also denied that he ever had any kind of sexual relationship with her, saying that she rejected any advances he made, and points out the fact that they had been in a room with two beds. When Alexander later spoke to the media, he said, all of a sudden, I'm the Simon Legree in all of this, and it's not justified. Simon Legree is a character in Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe, an anti-slavery novel. Legree was the cruel slave owner in the book. But then, just a few days later, on January 31st, Alexander was arrested on an unrelated charge after a previous girlfriend came forward accusing him of rape, but he was eventually released due to a lack of evidence. In terms of Elenia's case, Alexander has kind of dropped out of sight here. The police don't seem to have any evidence to connect him to any foul play, and they're unable to pursue the lead any further. However, Elenia's parents are convinced that somehow he put their daughter under a spell. Like I said, he did have a reputation for wooing young female tourists. Some sources say that Elenia looked up to him as a kind of guru figure. Did Alexander do something to Elenia? Was he possibly mad that she'd been rejecting his advances? But there is another possible explanation. At around 11 p.m. on January 6th, 1994, a young blonde woman is reported as jumping into the Mississippi River, near the Aquarium of the Americas, right on the edge of the French Quarter. A security guard had noticed a woman just sitting on a wharf, just staring out at the river, and asked her to move along because the area was closed, it was late at night. He recalls the woman as saying, well, I belong in the water anyway. She stood up before diving headfirst into the river, fully clothed. He said that it was clear that this girl was a very strong swimmer and it was also clear to him that this wasn't a suicide attempt. The girl was just messing around. He begged her to come back to shore but she continued swimming away to the center of the river. Now people are caught swimming in this part of the river fairly often. The locals say that there's this magic about the river that draws people in, especially when they've been hanging around the French Quarter drinking all day. It's really hot and the river looks calm and appealing. But the river's misleading. Whilst it looks really calm on the surface, it has a really treacherous undertow and the currents move really fast. The blonde woman, whoever she was, swims to the center of the river. But at that point, a big tanker comes around the corner and the woman starts panicking. She's shouting for help, but she keeps disappearing under the water and eventually she doesn't come up again. The security guard, who's watched all of this happen in just a matter of seconds, alerts the coast guard, who turn up shortly to search for this woman. But there's never any sign of anyone, dead or alive, and it's suspected that the remains drifted into the Gulf of Mexico and eventually out to sea. It's not particularly unusual that a body wouldn't be found in this area. Given the strange timing of the incident and the fact that the security guard's description of the clothing was similar to what Elenia was wearing that day, the police suspect that this may have been her. 
However, the security guard himself isn't so convinced, saying that based on the photographs the police showed him, he'd say this woman wasn't her, but it was dark and he can't be sure. Elenia's parents are also unconvinced that the girl that jumped into the river was their daughter, mentioning that there's a strong potential sighting of Elenia just the day after this, on the 7th of January. A Croatian fisherman was visiting New Orleans and he comes across a girl. He makes an offhand remark about her good looks in Croatian and he was really shocked when the girl thanked him in Italian. She clearly understood what he said. He got a really good look at this girl during the interaction and when he later saw photos of Elenia in the paper, he identified her as being the same girl. On February 18th, 1994, Elenia's parents issued a statement from Switzerland, which translated as saying, the investigations to find our daughter alive and probably being held against her will are actively being pursued. There have been numerous and reliable sightings worthy of pursuit. I'm sure the police did investigate the angle that Elenia may have been taken as a result of her parents being famous or even due to her own brief foray into Italian TV, but there was never any hostage demands or contact made, so this does seem fairly unlikely. Eventually, Elenia's case just went the way of so many others that it just faded into the background for everyone apart from her family and friends. Just a very classic, cold, missing persons case. As I previously mentioned, her parents, Albano and Romina, divorced in 1999, and they have very different approaches to this case. Romina refuses to believe that her daughter is dead, convinced that she's still alive and saying that she feels her spirit. Over the years, there have been many potential sightings of Lenya across the USA and across the world, but nothing has ever been confirmed. In 1996, two years after the disappearance, an unidentified caller claimed that Lenya was definitely still alive, but her whereabouts were still unknown. Now, I'm not sure if this caller called the family directly or the police, but it's very strange regardless. And then in 2011, a German magazine reported that Elenia was alive and well and living in a convent in Arizona. Apparently their source of this information was the New Orleans police chief who told them that she was living in St. Anthony's Greek Orthodox convent near Phoenix. This prompted Albano to come out and state the news was shameful speculation containing not a bit of truth. I do question why the New Orleans chief of police is going to German magazines apparently and telling them stuff that has no basis whatsoever. In 2006, Albano came forward and stated that he believed the security guard story, that he thought that Elenia was the girl who jumped into the river that night. In 2013, he called for her daughter to be legally recognised as dead. Under Italian law, a court can dedicate someone presumed dead if nothing is heard from a person for at least 10 years. By this point, it had been almost 20. He said to the media, I wished I never had to do this, and sure enough, I waited 10 more years than were necessary. They convinced me, for technical reasons, to file a request. Mind you, we are talking about presumed death, which means, after all, that there's still a glimmer of hope. I'm not too sure who the they he mentioned refers to, I'm going to assume that perhaps it's a legal team of some kind. Following legal procedure, the judges had to wait six months to see if anybody came forward with any information pertaining to Elenia's disappearance, before they could go ahead with the declaration. But of course, no one came forward with any information. She was finally declared presumed dead in December 2014. Despite this, her family have not given up and they hope that one day they might be able to find out what happened to their daughter. There is a chance, however slim, that maybe she did just decide to run away and disappear to start a new life. Given what we do know about Elenia, this seems fairly unlikely. She was doing really well with her degree. She was intending to go back to it. She was traveling, living her dream, working on her first novel, which she was really, really excited about. It is highly unlikely that she suddenly decided to run off and start anew. I can't decide what I do think is a more likely scenario in this case though. Was she hurt by one of the people she met on the street, potentially Alexander Masekela? I mean, regardless of if he did anything or not, it is weird that Elenia was sharing a hotel room with a 54-year-old man that she barely knew. I'm not sure if he was actually homeless or not. I assume he was, but I don't know that for sure. It's just a very, very weird scenario. Or maybe she did jump into the river. The security guard did say that it didn't seem suicidal, it was just weird. Was Elenia possibly drunk or was she on drugs? I mean, I'd say drugs would make her more likely to jump in the river, but I couldn't find any information that suggested that Elenia was the kind of girl who did drugs at all. It is really frustrating that the girl in the river may have actually been Elenia. We may know exactly what happened to her, but because the body was never found, we'll never know for sure. Or maybe somebody has literally gotten away with murder in this case. I really don't know which scenario in this case is the lesser of two evils. They're both equally horrible deaths. 
And if it wasn't Elenia, who was this blonde woman that just happened to drown in the river the same night that she disappeared? Like, why was nobody else ever reported as missing? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like what I'm doing here on my channel, then make sure you click that subscribe button down below and leave your comments. Let me know whose case you want me to talk about next. I really do think by talking about these stories, by sharing these names, then we can sort of help with the efforts to find them. All it ever takes is one person with one piece of information and that could blow any case wide open. And that's kind of the end goal of what this is, just spreading the words. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.